Hey everyone! Today we're going to do a lot of cool tips and tricks, call them power tools, for you to get even better at your comfy UI usage. A lot of these are things you may have seen in other videos or maybe not. Um, hopefully you'll learn at least one thing uh, because at the end of the day our goal is to help us all become more and more productive in content creation uh, using Stable Diffusion. So the first thing I want to kind of walk through is node templates. Uh, you may not know what node templates are or have seen them, but they kind of hide behind the scenes, uh, but they're extremely powerful. Essentially, what it allows you to do is take any sort of uh, configuration that you've set up and save those little sets of configurations so that you can call them up at any point in time within your workflow. So let's say, you know, I have my typical Miles Styler loader sampler. And you know you can see there's a lot of different connections I have to do up. It's not difficult in this case, right? You know you're just kind of going across the way, but there's lots of different you know more complex workflows that you may want to reuse over and over and over again. So in this case, we want to save this and recall it up as a node template. And so what this does, if I've right clicked here, uh, you can go down and sometimes it's up here, but down here also you'll see node templates. And here very very easy to both call up as well as save as well as you know rename and also delete uh, but you can see i have a whole bunch of uh node templates that i have created and just to show you how easy it is right i'm creating a new workflow from scratch i can go into my node template and say well i need to do a quick uh in painting so i click it and look at that all my stuff is all ready to go i don't even have to touch anything it's all ready i could just right away so it's a very very powerful and in fact, how you actually create a node template, you basically select the nodes that you want, right? In this case, these three, and then you go right click. When you're right clicking, by the way, don't right click on any of the elements themselves. Uh, do it kind of outside in an outside area and then go to save template. It's gonna ask you for the name. You just give it a name. And then after that point, it is gonna be listed here in this list right here. And it's great because sometimes also you'll need to make updates, right? Let's say you're, model uh, that you like using is going to be different this time so you can easily switch it and save the template and, and delete the old template um, very very easy um, and you can even go rename things so if you go to node templates and manage you can see you can easily delete those items uh, you can import and export them right so that's also and then and export them uh, individually this is very very valuable also for sharing right you may want to share a quick uh, node template, which is just a JSON file uh, with someone else. Uh, so you can do that. You can rename them just by renaming and hitting enter. And again, you can hit delete. And just to give you uh, another example, I use this all the time for the sketch to render, um, you know, just like the sketch to render video I had before. Uh, if you could see, I just literally did one click and I have my styler, my canvas, everything is all ready to go. So again, very, very valuable. Okay, and next is something called the impact bridge. So many times when you're creating a workflow, you have a very complex workflow, you have lots of different steps, and you want to kind of stop in the middle, right? You don't want to have to keep killing the process. Let's say you have a selection uh, area where you're just doing prompts to quickly find what element you want to enhance, and then you want to then transfer it into another area where you're going to do upscaling or other sorts of uh, operations on it. You don't want that to automatically happen all the way and you don't want to have keep to keep on killing the process so we want to kind of have like a pause or really kind of like a stop break point and so this impact bridge uh is a really great solution so if you just double click and search for bridge um, it is right here impact bridge you will need to have the impact pack uh, as the custom node installed but you probably already have it because it is a very common and very very powerful custom node um, that you can install in your Comfy Manager. And you can see it really has only one value, right? A pass and a block, uh, simple enough. And the value can be really any type because what this actually serves as is, is like a bridge. It's kind of connecting one part of your workflow to another, and it can literally stop things when you block it or pass things and let things flow through. So if we take our last example, right? I have a, a very basic kind of flow here. I'm going to now link my image here and let's say i want to do i'll use my new node template technology that we were talked about uh, we're going to do some kind of final image to image some final compositing here 
and our image is going to come here and it's going to here. So here's our little bridge in between, right? But I don't want this refining to happen every single time because I'm still doing my kind of image prospecting of sorts, right? So I'm just going to hit block. And at that point, when I run this, it will automatically just ignore the rest of the workflow. So again, very, very valuable. You'll see actually when you run it the first time, if you have something blocked, it'll kind of just show you, it'll kind of gray out like this. Um, that just means that it's blocked. And the next time you, if you say it's okay and you run it, it will, you know, not be uh, kind of in that muted or uh, kind of grayed out uh, sort of area. So very, very powerful uh, tool. Next, we are going to update our technology around cut, paste, and blending. So if you saw my last video uh, a little while back, we were kind of using the uh, preview bridge to not only uh, kind of mask and cut out areas, but also using it to kind of you know draw the area where I want my uh, kind of element that's cut to be pasted. That's really great. Sometimes it's, it works really well if you want to kind of stretch and, and kind of combine, but sometimes it's a little annoying too because you know exactly where you want this to go, but once you render it in, it's not exactly where you want it to be, and then you have to go back to the mask and redo, 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 and it, it can be a little bit of a pain. So what I found was actually another set of nodes which makes it a little bit easier. Um, there are two plugins that you are going to want to use. One is the Allure uh, custom node, A-L-L-O-R. Again, that's in your Comfy Manager. And the other one is Mikey Notes. And I'm going to kind of talk through what each of these do. Uh, the first one, uh, you'll also want the upscale, but that's you can see the little fox here. This is part of the native foundation of Comfy, so you don't have to install anything special for that. Um, so what that's, this is going to allow you to do is essentially scale up or down your uh, element that you're cutting, right? So if you want to shrink it or make it look like it's uh, kind of in the background of your image, uh, you can do that, or you can expand it and make it bigger. Uh, and then image rotation, right? So you can rotate it kind of in a 360 degree uh, area, and I'll show you what that kind of looks like. Um, and then finally, you can kind of shift the positioning of that uh, item that you're cutting. So you don't, in this case, for the example, this little hedgehog, he's kind of right in the middle of the image. Well, let's say I want kind of him near the right side of the stage, or maybe a little further up front or a little in the back. I have the ability to do that. So we're going to show you exactly what that looks like right now. So, um, uh, and you can see in terms of just the connections, right? You're just going image to image, image to image. So you're just kind of connecting one step to the next step to the next step. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And you'll see even just the normal cut and paste that we did in the last video a little while back, it's the same as before. You're basically masking, cutting, and then pasting. So in this case, right, we're, we're gonna use our hedgehog for our background scene. I just created a nice little kind of theater for them to perform and i'm going to now mask it out so the actual masking to cut is exactly the same as we've done before right we're basically going to use our sam detector or our masker and we're going to detect does a really good job in this case right so it selects the whole thing and we're done pretty much sometimes again like before you can go in with comfy um, uh, comfy shop uh, which is another uh, custom node you can get or you can go into the mask editor down here to kind of clean up some of that masking, but here in this case, it did it really well. And so we're gonna do this and we're gonna see where he ends up. I'm gonna just start with a position of zero, zero, just to show you where it ends up. And I'm going to run it. And here he is. Uh, now, obviously we do not want him in the top left corner unless he's doing a flying magic trick. Uh, but no, in reality, we again, we want him down here kind of near the bottom. But so here's where the, kind of the ease comes in where we don't have to keep going back and forth and back and forth. He's already cut and pasted, right? So we only need to now scale and shift him and rotate him however we want. So in this case, uh, you know, let's say that we want to just make him a little bit smaller. We can just bring him down a little bit to scale. And um, angling, we want him just a little bit tilted, uh, right? And you'll see how that affects him over there. And then finally, we want him kind of down and to the right. So we're going to go way to the right. And we're going to go down. And we're going to hit render again. And see, there we go. And so we're like, oh, yeah, it's close. Not quite. We're going to bring him back a little bit, a little bit more. We're going to bring him down a little bit more. 
and let's rotate him up just a touch more as well. So let's say, there we go. It's the kind of like, kind of peeking his head in, you know, from the curtain. Uh, and this is great, right? And I'm, actually, I'm going to make him a little bit more here to the left. Okay, great. Um, so you can see, right? Very, very easy to kind of just quick render, quick render. And this is exactly where that that um, impact bridge can come in too, right? So we could have here, let's say we want to go and add the you know final compositing uh, where we can you know transform it a little bit more. We can go latent to latent over here, right? Uh, and in fact, because we have the encode right here, we don't need to do it twice. So we're going to get rid of that guy. And and we're kind of all set here, right? So normally we just have this blocked uh, so that we can just do all of our kind of cut, paste, and shifting, etc. But in this case, we now we want it to go through. And here we're going to change this uh, final uh, styling of the text to children. Hog characters. Okay, and you know, in terms of the denoise, we're going to keep it low, but it will show you the effect either way. And but because right now, again, just like the last time, right, it just shows like it's it's almost like layered. It doesn't really show like it's blended in at this point. Um, okay, so we're going to now run it. And you can see, right, look at the shadow. The shadows are starting to appear. The character becomes a little bit more of a character because we, we define that. Uh, but all in all, the scene's pretty well. And you can see the rotation has it. So now he's kind of on one foot, which is very cool. Uh, at the same time, we may want to, again, this is denoising. So you can make it as kind of AI driven or creative as you want. So in this case, let's say we want it really creative. So I boost it up to about 87. Obviously, if you go way above that, it's going to completely change the scene. It kind of already has a little bit, but you can see already, look, it has to has the opportunity to, to leverage a lot more elements in here to finalize your scene. So you can play with that, of course, as always, um, and, but you can see there's a lot of power in the ability to do the cut, uh, pasting, and blending using this technique. Uh, masking using words. Now, this is an interesting uh, technique. You know, a lot of the times when you're doing masking, the SAM detector, right, the comfy shops, etc., they do a pretty decent job of being able to find and select and mask the areas that you want. But sometimes you have very fine details uh, that just would take forever, or sometimes the SAM detector is, you know, bringing too much uh, detail in and it's too much to mask, etc. And I found this really cool technique called ClipSeg. Uh, I'm going to be linking the model as well so you can download that. Is you will put that in under your models folder. It'll be under your ClipSeg uh, uh, clip folder right there. But by doing so, it is a very cool and smart uh, sort of engine where you don't have to select anything. You just describe what you want selected and it's gonna automatically mask it. Now, is it perfect? It's not, uh, but it's really, really good as you'll see. So for example, in this case, I have a woman kind of in an Alpine sort of situation. Uh, she's drinking a cup of coffee, all is great. Well, I don't want the blonde hair. Uh, so I'm just gonna just say hair and I'm gonna bring it over and I'm gonna say short curly red hair and make sure it you know, kind of wraps around the neck. Okay, and look at this, amazing, right? And, and again, that this is where your denoise comes a lot in, right? If you put it at one, it's going to be a very hard, and you'll see some of the outlines of where it's selecting. And if you do it too little, it may not have enough effect. So you can play with this a lot. I find for this sort of um, uh, kind of in painting, it really, at that kind of 0 0.8, 0 0.9 level, is really, really powerful. Uh, and I tend to use a lot of exponential scheduling as well, just as an FYI. Um, but that's just one example. So let's just say use the hair. Let's do the cup. I don't want her holding a cup anymore. I want her holding a cuddly uh, elephant toy. Okay, we're gonna run it and let's see what happens. Isn't this amazing? It can actually do very great details. Uh, and again, you can vary it by seed and so you can definitely get what you want very, very quickly. But you can see it, it automatically understands the context of um, where you're masking 
So it uh, brings that in. In fact, let's just do one final example. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, let's uh, let's not do a, a snowy mountain anymore, right? We're instead going to do a uh, an erupting volcano. But again, keep in mind, right? And so if we click the picture, it's kind of blurry in the background. So we're going to say a blurry erupting volcano. So let's say Boca blurry erupting volcano, right? Because that hopefully will kind of simulate the effect of uh, kind of that blurry background sort of feel. Okay, so there you go. If we zoom in, it looks pretty good here, right? It has nice blurriness. And again, this is just a very quick sort of feel, but you get this, you get the sense that you have a lot of creative opportunity here using this clip seg. So hope this was very helpful. Thank you again so much as always. Please subscribe and share, and we will talk soon.